Let's just pretend it never, never happened. I, I, I came prepared. Don't look. Pretend, pretend there's nothing here. Okay. I'm dying, dude. Okay. I have like six of these. Okay. I have the tip. Now I just have to stuff the rest of back into my pocket. And then I can like extract some. Just share if you guys can do this for notes or scrub my pencil. Even though I don't bring any paper, I bring a lot of like supplies. What's this? It's a highlighter, but like it's thick. so cute. Surprisingly, it's like ten years old, but like it still and works. It still works. Definitely, because like it's fresh. Yeah. I only unpacked it like a while ago. I have this, which is like, I don't know, all my spoon supplies are like slightly weird. I get a pencil. I have a pencil, but I, I put like one of those marker, not marker, the pen grip things onto it. You put it on there? Yeah, it's supposed to be like for a pen, but I kind of like got bored with that pen and then kind of ripped it off. But like, the, the pen was done by that point, like, there's nothing yeah. left. So I just put it on here, so it's pretty nice. And it works. I can't believe it fit. Yeah, like, especially for writing essays, it's good. Because, like, if I write a lot of essays, here gets, like, a really weird thing. But this makes it nice. Hello? Okay. We are on uh, Um, 
And then, yeah, we're gonna narrow down. So, okay, great, you're in university, you've done your first year. How do you specialize further? How do you decide what you're gonna focus on, really, on, on sort of more of a detailed level? Okay, also, for today, um, if you gotta eat, if you're hungry, I don't care, just please clean up after. Even if there's like creeping noises, it doesn't bother me. Um, so go ahead, and just clean up after. And also, if you have any questions as I get into the presentation, just throw your hand up. I'm happy to pause, I'm happy to answer questions. So, yes, okay? Okay. So, by the end of this, by the end of this session, hopefully you will feel more comfortable going into first year. Your understanding is maybe broadened or expanded when it comes to degrees and programs and what those are. Um, on more of an applied level, you're going to understand a couple ways to navigate the university website in a way that's going to be beneficial to you because at least I know when I applied to university, I really had no idea like the website, there's so many things on it and there's so many different areas that you can click on and it takes you to all these different pages. So sometimes it can be kind of confusing. And then I want to leave you all empowered as you walk out to think about your university in a way that suits you as an individual. Not sort of this like collective first year mask, but just you. What is interesting to you as an individual? And I think that's something that's really important to think about. Okay, so the first thing to understand and first thing that's helpful is to start thinking about what you need to do before you move on. I know this is a, a novel concept, but it's very important. So um, there's not really a best time to start thinking about what you want to study, but ideally, the earlier the better. Ideally, the earlier the better. Um, and why is this important? Well, when you're kind of thinking about what you might want to study, there's kind of three really important things to keep in mind. Um, so the first one is your high school grad requirement. This is, you know, A plus something important to think about. When you need to graduate high school, one of the courses that you're absolutely essential. That's one thing that you might have some help with advisors for. Um, but then you want to look at those right next to your university entrance requirements, okay? So while you're picking your high school courses, think about what the university you want to apply to needs in order to apply to it. Okay, so usually the university has general admission requirements. It's going to tell you what kind of grades you need, what kind of courses you need. Usually there's a very standard um, like writing level that you need and probably need some standard courses like science and math. Don't quote me on this, um, but that's something to like look into you and look at. Um, and then once you decide kind of what you want to apply to, then you can look at your degree specific requirements. So, if you are applying to sciences, there's going to be different requirements than to apply to arts. Um, and that might seem common sense, but it's something that sort of gets lost in all the excitement about applying to university. Um, and these are helpful things to think about when we're like either in grade 12 or going into grade 12 or senior year. Um, really helpful to think about. Um, and the last thing to think about is the English language requirement. Uh, because as far as I know, there's Pretty, um, this is a pretty important thing. Um, and essentially most high schools are going to have a number of different English and writing courses and it's really important that you get the one that is going to let you apply to the university. Um, and that's something that, at least for me, I was never told about in high school or you know, never was really talked about that much. Um, so if you type in, for example, University of British Columbia English Language Department, it's going to give you information on what kind of level and what kind of courses you need to have passed and what kind of grades you need um, to even apply, even to send in an application. Um, and also another important thing to note is that the requirements are going to vary. So if you are a BC student versus um, a student in a different province versus an international student, there's going to be different information for each of them and different kinds of requirements that are needed when you apply. Okay, so when you actually go to apply, so now you've figured out your high school stuff, or maybe you're done, you're graduated, you kind of looked at it, um, now you're actually going to apply to the university, and um, in this case we're using UBC because we're using um, but 
UBC is going to ask you for two things, your first choice degree and your second choice degree. Um, and this is something that does require a little bit of thought. It's going to take some time, maybe, for you to decide what you want to do for your first choice degree and your second choice degree. Um, but you will have to pick when you apply. And there's typically kind of two reactions when you get to this page and you're asked to pick a degree. First reaction. <laughs> the first reaction is, yes, I already know. I got this in the bag. I know what I'm going to apply for. I know what degree I want. And I have a second choice. It's all clearly laid out. Um, this is one kind of reaction. And there might be some of you in the streets that already know what you're going to apply for. Um, the other reaction is this. So the other reaction is confusion. Um, I have no clue what to do. I didn't even think about what I was going to study in high school. Um, I just kind of coasted through high school and had a ton of fun, which is awesome. But sometimes you get to this stage and you're like, I have no idea what I'm going to apply for. And honestly, this is more common. This is the norm. So if you're feeling this way or even remotely this way, chances are like 80% of you are also feeling this way. And that's totally fine. That is literally why we're here. Okay, so the first thing to think about when you are choosing your degree is understanding what a degree means and what a program means because there are degrees at UBC and then there are programs. And typically what happens is you choose what degree you're going to, you know, your first choice and second choice. Um, and that degree would be Bachelor of Arts, for example, or Bachelor of Sciences. Um, and that's what you're going to be picking for your application. And there's, there's tons more degrees than this. These are just kind of the two common examples. Um, once you get into your degree program and you're in your first year or second year or even third year, then you specialize into a actual program, okay? So within the Bachelor of Science degree, you might have Integrated Science, which lets you combine a couple different sciences. You might have Computer Science, which is a really popular one, but it's also competitive. Um, or you might have Physics, you might have Mathematics. There's tons of different programs that you can specialize into. Same thing with Arts. You might have Arts is a huge um, degree that spans Psychology, it spans Art History, it spans different languages. Um, so there's time, and you can even do certain degrees. So for example, I believe you can do a psychology degree through a arts degree, or you can do a psychology through a sciences degree. So these are kind of like helpful things to think about and look at. Um, and if you go into UBC's academic calendar, it will actually give you like a full layout of what you need for each and what kind of courses you need for each. So that's UBC academic calendar. Okay, so we are approaching. Yeah. So you just said that it's different between getting a high degree in the Bachelor of Science versus getting a PhD, or different requirements that you probably said versus a PhD. Yeah, they're going to have different requirements. So if you're interested in looking at um, a program that you can do through two different degrees. Um, that you can see calendar is going to be helpful to look at because it will be different courses. So you'll probably, like for example, if you're doing like biopsychology or neuroscience through um, a science degree, you're probably going to have like, for example, stats courses or like a little bit more heavier emphasis on science rather than, um, for example, the psychology degree through arts. Um, you're still going to come out with a psychology degree, but it is going to say bachelor's of science or bachelor's of arts depending on what um, degree you do it through. Great question, thank you. Okay, so if you're sitting there thinking, okay, how am I going to decide? <laughs> how am I going to decide? My, the programs are overwhelming. Let's start with the degree. Um, I feel like the most common answer to this is like, okay, what am I interested in? And sometimes that can be overwhelming because you're sitting there being like, I don't really know what I, you know, I have some interests, like I like playing sport or I like music, um, but I don't really know in terms of academics, like what I want to focus on. Um, and so I've kind of brainstormed a list for you all um, to maybe write down and 
think about because there's more than things that are just based on interests that might lead you into a degree that's really fulfilling for you as an individual. So, some things to think about. School subjects is the most common. What school subject do I like the most? Um, and that's a really great starting point, but there are so many school subjects that are not taught in high schools that are offered in university. Um, so maybe you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't really like my courses in high school. I don't really want to think about it or do it. Well, there's so many different um, things that you can do in university that you can't take um, in high school. So for example, I did not take, like there was not psychology offered in my high school, and then I ended up doing like um, a cognitive psychology um, aspect of my degree in university. So school subjects, yes. Hobbies, something you can think about is what do I love to read? Chances are, if you're picking up like an aerospace book or like a book about space, ah, maybe that's like an avenue to think about. Or maybe you read like a lot of sort of psychology-oriented or self-help books. That's another thing to think about. Maybe social psych is something you might be interested in. Um, so sort of really dig into the things that you are doing, even on like a daily level, and think about that a little bit deeper than simply what just interests you. Um, extracurriculars, yeah. Some of the things to think about are family careers. What careers are you familiar with? Um, you know, maybe you have a caregiver or a parent that does something you really like or something you really don't like. Um, that's something to think about too. What are some careers around you that you really don't see yourself doing? Because that's going to be a good indicator of maybe other similar degree, um, careers that you might not be quite as interested in. And then lastly, I just want you to take a minute to think about your strengths. What are you good at? Um, and I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, high school courses or classes. I'm talking about, are you good at talking to people? Do you enjoy doing that? Are you good at scheduling your time really well? Are you good at organizing? Um, so think about your strengths kind of on that broad level that maybe you don't always think about it. And I can pretty much guarantee you that all of you have some sort of strength that maybe you don't think about all the time. And so sort of what I just said here, here's some other little pointers. Um, do you enjoy talking to people? Do you enjoy being outdoors? Is that something you don't really like doing that much? Or do you really like being outdoors in the summer? That's also something to think about. Um, do you enjoy being in fast-paced environments? Can you handle being in fast-paced environments? Because not all jobs are like that, right? Um, and then also two really important things at the end here. What makes you feel at peace? What? Where do you kind of feel the most at home? Where do you feel the most relaxed? Um, and that's something that's not really talked about when we think about our careers. Um, there's a lot of push for, you know, the grind and stuff like that. But chances are, if you're doing a your career where you feel at peace, it's not going to be an effort to grind. You're going to want to do it anyways, and that's really helpful. And kind of along with that is your lifestyle aspirations. And that's just a practical question. Where do you see yourself you know, living? Where do you see yourself working in 10, 15 years? And then you can think about what might align or what degree might align with those lifestyle aspirations. And there's a very good chance that if you're doing a degree that you love, it's going to be incorporated into your lifestyle too. Um, yeah. Please, everyone, appreciate the mitochondria. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so the last thing that we can think about, the last couple things, is, um, okay, I've gotten you to sort of think about now what you're interested in or like, you know, all these different elements. Um, what do you not know about? Let's go from a, an absence perspective here. What are things you really know nothing about? What are jobs that you might have no clue what they do? And what are you curious about learning more of? Okay? So if you have no idea what an engineer does, but you're curious about it, look it up. See what's going on there. Um, look at the things that you don't know much about. And even if you don't choose them, you're going to have way more knowledge than you do. Okay? Okay, so you're sitting all here thinking, okay, all these different things, what makes me feel at peace, what brings me energy, where do I, what do I do with this, how do I actually narrow it down? Um, and for me, 
this is what I found the most helpful to do when I decided what to study. Okay? I found it most helpful to draw or connect a bunch of words that I'm sort of interested in. So maybe that question, like, I'm interested, I like being outdoors, maybe that's something you start with, okay? What are some words that connect to outdoors? Well, the ocean connects to the outdoors, pets connect to the outdoors, camping, trees, environment. So maybe you really like being by the ocean, but you don't really like camping. <laughs> that's another area where you can kind of narrow it down. Okay, I like being by water, but I don't really like being in the forest or being in the ocean. So there's all these different ways that you can kind of brainstorm to narrow things down. And just to sort of, like, I wanted to give you a concrete example. So this is sort of what my brainstorm looked like when I was leaving grade 12 and when I was picking what I was applying for, okay? So this is my personal one. This does not mean it has to be anyone else's. But this is kind of what I was interested in. So in grade 12, I was kind of, I really liked two things. I liked creative writing and I liked biology. And those two things are really not connected, um, at least on the outside. So I knew that I really liked creative writing because I loved reading fiction and I loved writing my own stories and I really liked English class because I could do that. Um, and I was also pretty good at writing essays, okay? Horrible at math though. And then another thing that I really enjoyed was biology. I had a pretty decent memory so I could memorize a lot of terms and it was fun for me to sort of be able to study them and, and kind of nail them down. And I was also just sort of interested in biological processes. So those were two things that I started with. And I have here, like, yes, animals. I really like animals. I still love animals. Um, but I decided that I probably wouldn't be able to handle being a vet, which is sort of a natural you know, length of um, biology and animals. But one thing that I was interested in was psychology. And I knew psychology was kind of related to biology but I didn't know anything about it. So I decided to take a couple sort of like intro courses in my first year to learn about psychology, and I ended up really loving it. So what I ended up doing in my undergrad was I combined psychology with English, and the psychology courses I took were way more biological, like sort of biology oriented, so I took a lot of neuroscience courses, I took cognitive psychology, I took neuropsychology, um, and then I would walk over to the building down the road and take like, Victorian literature. So um, that was my combination. And then what happened in grad school was I ended up combining both of them and focusing on linguistics. So there's language elements, but then there's more of that like biological scientific element that I got into when I left and started grad school. So that kind of gives you an idea of like just because you start at a certain point doesn't mean that you're going to end up exactly where you started. And it's also like, it's a good thing to expand and like think about different areas. Um, so this is just an example to just kind of let you know, like this is how it can be. It doesn't always have to be this way, but um, yeah. Okay. So once you kind of have this like map or brainstorm figured out, um, and you, maybe you only have like a couple of terms, it doesn't mean you have to have a lot. Now, you can go and check the university website. Um, and if you have a phone or a laptop, feel free to type this in. I don't care if your phones are out, if you're typing this in, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so it's university website, uh, uwc.ca slash programs. Um, and you can probably even type in UBC programs and it will show you the page that I'm telling you about. Um, yeah, so UBC programs. It's going to look something like this. Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to type that in and see if you can find uh, it. Can you go back? Go back? Give you a second here. Start giving me some nods if you found the page. Good, thumbs up. Thumbs up if you found the page. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people have found it. Um, you can even type in like BBC program topics, but it's gonna end up looking like this. Okay, so when you've thought about sort of the things that you're interested or curious about, something helpful to click on up here is looking for program suggestions, choose your interests, okay? Then you're not overwhelmed with reading a bunch of outlines. You can start clicking on little things that you're interested in. Um, and then you can learn about them in sort of like a 
more organic way, which I find to be really helpful. So it's going to look something like this. Once you click on that, choose your interests. If you're on your laptop, you should be able to do that. Um, you can start clicking things that you are kind of like sticking out to you or things that you're interested in. And once you click a bunch on the first page, you can say, show me more. And it will literally just keep giving you more things to be interested in or things that you might want to learn about. Um, and even if you don't want to do the research in the moment, you can just write down the names of these things that are sort of like pulling you in and making you feel a little bit more interested. So that's definitely something you can do. Okay, so I'm actually, I saved a little bit of time for us to do this, and I handed out some papers. Um, if you did get a paper and you don't have a pencil, just put it on your phone or your laptop or something. But I'm gonna give you like mm, five, 10 minutes to start drawing out that sort of math thing that I showed you. <coughs> so start thinking about those kind of suggestions. I know a lot of people took pictures of it. But just take a minute and do it right now. Start thinking about some things that you're interested in. Um, because I definitely find like, if I don't get time to do this, then chances are I don't have to get So I just give, give yourself a little bit of time now. And start throwing out, throwing out some words on paper or words on your phone, notes out, or on your laptop. Things that you are curious about, interested in, don't know anything about. And start throwing them into some sort of like brainstorm map. It can be really messy. It does not have to be perfect. And maybe you use this program to write down some of the interests. And you can feel free to like chat and brainstorm with people inside your side and not care. Just something like that. Go ahead. I'm going to give you maybe five minutes. Go ahead.
I have no idea. I don't know. I just like, I don't know. Oh, really? It's really good. Oh, okay. Oh. It's, I'm not cheating. I'm just using my resources well. Okay. Subjects? I really just like, yeah. I just like anything that wasn't English and social. I love everything except English. I love reading in English, but I hated essays. Oh. Um, Maybe hate essays is that. fine, but like, I, I, I just don't like to read in English. I can read in Chinese. I, I used to like really love reading novels when I was in China, but when I came here, and I don't read really much. Because I think in Mandarin, so I can't read really. Right now, I'm pretty okay with essays. Like, if I'm writing an essay, I don't really care. <laughs> because, like, in the, my class last year, I thought it's split into reading and writing, and I got oh. higher grade on essays than reading. Oh, because Like, I'm gonna read probably because I love analyzing like books, and like plot is my favorite. But if you ask me to write an essay on what I've learned, it would be like a bunch of disjointed points. Like, like cruise around on 
social media, um, like check like different like YouTube, Twitter, like things that are associated with those degrees and see what kind of things people do with them, you know? Because um, I feel like that's much more applied than sort of just taking the degree in the literal sense and like reading the requirements for it. You're gonna learn a lot more about it and what you can do with it if you just like look a little bit outside the website too. And that's a pro tip that I didn't really even think of when I was applying. And then lastly, the reality is there's gonna be some 8.30, 9 a.m. classes that nobody wants to go to. Um, so something to think about when you're choosing a degree is what is gonna like make you excited and motivated enough to get up and go to class. If you're looking at a degree and you're like, mm, I think I'd probably skip class for that, then maybe you're not that interested in it. Um, ideally, you're picking something that is gonna give you not necessarily that excitement, because we can't be excited about like everything every day, but something that's gonna motivate you to like get out and like not sleep in past class every single day. Okay. Important reminder, I'm telling you about all these programs about the web pages to look at. Um, you don't have to pick your program when you apply. Okay? One more time, you don't have to pick your program when you apply, it's only your degree. Only your first choice and second choice degree. So we're not asking you to specify that far. That specification will come in your second year or third year. Um, and I'm gonna get into right now what that specification looks like for your second year to third year, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit in the future, but I think it's gonna be helpful and I wish that I had had these tips when I was choosing for my second year or third year. So, in your second year and third year, you've been admitted, you're choosing your courses, and now you're specifying what kind of degree you wanna do. So say you've been admitted for science and you're not really sure, okay, great, I'm doing a science degree, what, what, what in science do I wanna study? You know, what do I come, wanna come out with with expert knowledge on? Um, so, just like before first year, when you should browse your courses, look at that academic calendar. Um, browse courses in your second and third year too, and actually like schedule the time to do this. I feel like it's kind of easy to be overwhelmed, um, but if you set a certain time, like okay, one hour on this day, I have one hour to read through the descriptions of some courses that are maybe like in my degree program. So. Um, you know, if you've taken in science, you've taken physics, math, comp sci courses, um, and you're not really sure what to focus on, go into those upper level courses. Go into 300, 400 level and read the course descriptions. Um, and I know this might seem like, yeah, that makes sense, but a lot of times students don't do this. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and yes, rule of thumb, you know, 300, 400 are going to be your upper level courses. Um, some other things to think about. Uh, Google that program. So if you take in math, physics, ComSci, look up the ComSci website and look at uh, the different props in the program. So if you look at the different props in the contact list, you're going to see kind of what they're interested in and what they do, and that might give you an indicator of something you want to do too. Um, so Google your faculty. Take a range of courses in your first year. And I cannot emphasize this enough, um, and this is not the second year and third year, but write down your registration date and time. I can't tell you how many times I've been late and had to get on the wait list. Um, so, and that's pretty normal, but write it down and schedule it, okay? And then, if you're waitlisted, that's totally fine, but have some backups. And that's also something students don't always do. If you are picking your courses, have like two or three courses for each semester that you've also written down that work in your timetable that also work. Um, a quick, a quick uh, story that I think might be helpful. Um, in my first year, I was in the arts program. I was taking biology courses. I was taking um, intro to psych. I was taking English. I was taking a wide variety. I was also registering for a math course. Okay? 
Um, and on the very first day of class, on first year, I showed up to my classroom like 30 minutes early because I left really early because I didn't want to be lost on campus, um, which was a very real possibility because I'm in this direction. Um, but basically, I showed up to this math class, and I hadn't taken math since like first semester in high school, and I had taken like pre 12 or something. And the teacher walked around and handed out, I'm not even kidding, like a stack of papers this thick to every student. And she's like, yeah, so this is just like a giant test to see where you're at as students before we start the semester. And I sat there and scanned through the pages and I just could not find the motivation. I was like, I don't wanna do this. I just had this like gut feeling. I was like, I, this is not anything that I can trust in it or want to do. Um, and leaving class on the first day, first year, I like called my mom and was like, mom, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to be in this class. And she very much was like, no, you should take like, a, you know, an array of classes, courses, just to see if you like it or not. And I was like, I know I'm not going to want to do this, right? And I ended up pulling up from the class. And it's kind of a running joke now because I've never had to take a math class ever because it's not what I'm doing, what I'm interested in. So if you have like a gut feeling like that for a class, it's okay to make that decision. Um, however, if you're not sure, it's also a good idea to just stay in it for more than one day um, and just see how you feel about it later on into the class. Um, and also like thinking about talking with your parents, there's probably a really good chance that a lot of parents of you guys in this room I already have ideas of what they want you to do. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just getting up in the morning and going to your classes. Okay? So having that communication is important, but also it's important to do something that you're interested in too. Um, and if you know you've been given suggestions, it's great to check those out. It's great to see if you're interested in them. Um, I'm not saying it isn't, but just think about you know what you're interested in and what's going to get you out of class. Um, so IE smaller choices will lead to greater choices. Um, that being said, you know I did psychology in the department, and now that I'm in linguistics, I wish that I'd done science because I had to teach myself statistics basically from scratch because it was not a course that I had to take. So there's always things that you might like learn in retrospect. Um, sometimes it takes the experience of being in a class to know that you don't want to do it. So you might have some classes that you really don't like, and that's totally fine. That's totally normal. Um, I've definitely taken my first year of classes that I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So sometimes it can be really helpful too. Um, and also, a really important tip is to try to distinguish. If you're in a class, is it the class content you don't like, or is it the teacher? Okay, so this is really important. If you're in a class, you're trying different classes in first year, and you're using them to decide what you want to do, if you wrote down, okay, I don't really like this class because the teacher always, or like because the you know, class were like this, think about if it's the teaching style or if it's the actual content. Would you be more interested in the content if it was taught in a different way? Or assessed in a different way? So those are two different things to, um, to think about, and I wish that I had kind of thought about it more as well. Um, as you transition to second year and third year, write everything down. Keep track of the classes you like, because also you're going to forget. You're going to forget classes you like and classes you don't like. Keep track of all the courses, um, and as you approach second year, keep track of the ones that you like the most. And you can also start emailing and talking to professors about their work. So when you're actually deciding on a program, um, it can be helpful to actually reach out to profs you've had or even the TAs for classes you've had and ask about the things that they do. Okay, so if you took like a psychology class that you were really interested in or an engineering class you're really interested in or, you know, anything really, if you're interested in it, go reach out. Um, in most cases, the profs will be happy to chat with you. Um, and if they're not, it's usually just because they're busy. So don't work, don't take it too personally. Um, profs have a lot going on. And then the other thing is you can 
also talk to people outside of academia. You know, if you're meeting somebody who works in a field you're interested in, chat with them, hear about what they do, think about what they do. Um, and then as you get into second year and third year, and this is really important, um, start looking at volunteer options to gain experience, okay? You're not really told this, or I wasn't told this at all in first year, second year, but like getting some volunteer work or getting some research hours with a prof or a lab on campus is going to be so helpful, okay? Um, and chances are profs will talk about their labs or research options. Um, a lot of even humanities profs will have like volunteer stuff you can do. And it's not also, like yes, it's great to gain the experience, but it's also great because you're forming connections. You're, you're getting profs to know your name, especially in a big research university this size. Um, you're gonna be in classes of like 200 new students. And so reaching out and talking to profs and TAs is a great way for them to learn who you are um, and consider you for future opportunities as well. Um, and also, if you can't get in contact with the profs, contact the TAs. Um, I check my email all the time as a TA, and I'm always super happy to help students give recommendations, give resources, because I've been in that spot too. Um, and talk to faculty advising. Talk to all the advising you can, because they're going to have really detail-oriented information that I just don't have the time to give you today. I wish I could, honestly. But I also don't want you sitting here forever because I'm boring. Okay. So as we're getting into second year, third year, we're deciding on our program. Um, I did my second year and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was taking English and I was also taking like neuropsychology. And I was considering going in to like be a neuroscientist, um, but I was afraid of looking at brains. Um, but I also was like not fully invested in like the English creative writing side. Um, and I remember just having like a mild breakdown one night because I had to decide what I wanted to do and I just couldn't decide. Um, and I went to faculty advising and asked if I could do a double honors degree with both and they actually laughed at me. Like the lady like full on just like laughed at me and she's like, you'd be here for eight years. So you have to decide. And I was like, well, which means okay, now I have to decide. Um, and I ended up deciding for my master's I knew I wanted to go to grad school, I was thinking, okay, if I'm writing a big research paper, do I want to write a scientific research paper, or would I rather some freedom of what I was doing? And for me, I liked the freedom a little bit more, and that was the tipping point. So that's what made me decide to do English for my master's. Um, but I also ended up doing uh, an emphasis. At UBC, you can do an emphasis in science and tech studies. So I did an English master's with an emphasis on science and tech studies, and that led me into linguistics and discourse analysis, and I work with medical literature. So I kind of got to do both, yes. What's an emphasis? An emphasis, so that you wouldn't have to worry about until like a master's level, but basically you can do like your core master's and then add on courses to have like, a research emphasis if you want to add it on. Um, so like we have the science and technology studies program that allows you to take, courses with them, and then you have like a research emphasis on top of your master's. Does that make sense? So it's like a major and a minor? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, for your master's, for sure. Okay. And I'm telling you this not to say that this is what's going to happen, but um, just to tell you it's normal. You know, it's okay if you get to this stage and you still are not going to be sure. It's fine. And I'm giving you that reassurance now, and I hope that you remember that reassurance a couple years from now when you're assigned. Okay, so some takeaways. Some takeaways from today's workshop. Um, you might have your choice early, or you might have it later, and either is fine. Okay? Either is fine. Um, it's okay to take extra time to complete a degree, like if you're deciding later on. If it's fulfilling to you, it's not going to matter after you So if you need extra time to do it, take it. Do something you want to do. Even if it means you have to change your mind, that's fine. Um, and also, lastly, it's great to seek advice. You are not alone. There's so many people that are here to help you. Um, so don't feel like it's all on you to decide on your own. There's so many resources out there that you can use and talk to. Uh, 
Um, okay, so before we go, there, I'm pretty much done. But if you could log on to your program portal and go to the workshop evaluations, it would really mean a lot to me if you could just write down um, anything that you liked about this. That would be amazing. But basically, just any feedback you have. If you could do that quick, that would be amazing. And then I'm going to let you guys go early because it's beautiful out. And I hope you enjoy your day. Okay, thank you so much. Everyone clapping. On modules. Us clapping. It's like. Oh my god. What? Knock on wood? No, like in Model UN, if you agree with someone, it's like, oh, it's like not. This? Yeah, you can't clap. Clap oh. is like, you're not supposed to or not that. Yeah, something like you have to knock on like the tit desk or something. Like